What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now look at this nice and beautiful Olympiad question we have here on the board that we're going to be solving. And the question says, find real values x and y such that x plus y squared is equal to y cubed and y plus x squared is equal to x cubed. Well, our first step towards solving this question is to subtract this second equation from the first equation. So let's do that. So I'm going to be having x minus y plus y squared minus x squared equal to y cubed minus x cubed. That is it. So our next step is to, you know, factorize this. This is difference of two squared and this is difference of two cubes. So let's factorize this. So I'm going to be having x minus y plus difference of two squared can be written as y minus x times y plus x. So that is difference of two squared, which is this equal to, this is difference of two cubes, which can be factorized as y minus x times y squared plus xy plus x squared. So that is it. So we have been able to factorize these two expressions. Now notice that I have y minus x here, but what I have here is x minus y. I can write this to look like this. So how do I do that? It becomes y minus x, but in order to validate this, I'm going to be putting minus outside. Have you seen that? Very good. So I have plus y minus x, y plus x equal to y minus x times y squared plus xy plus x squared. That is it. So now we can factorize the left hand side. So on factorizing the left hand side, you notice that y minus x is common. So let's factorize, let's bring that out, y minus x out. Now, what is going to be remaining here? I'm going to be having minus one plus, and I'm going to be having y plus x. That is it, equal to y minus x times y squared plus xy plus x squared. Very good. Now, if you look carefully, you notice that we're going to be having two cases here. And one of such cases is that y minus x, which is this, is going to be equal to 0. Or this other expression equal to this expression, which is negative 1 plus y plus x is equal to this expression on the right, which is y squared plus xy plus x squared. So these are the two cases we have. So let's start with this first case. So let me call this one case 1, which is this one y minus x equal to 0. Now, you notice that when I move x to this other side, you notice that y is equal to x. So, which means I can factorize this in any of the original equations. So, let's put this in the first equation. So, I'm going to be using x instead. So, whenever I see y, I'm going to be putting x there. So, this is x. So, I put x plus here, I'm going to be putting x squared equal to x cubed. Very good. So let's move everything here to the right-hand side. So I'm going to be having x cubed minus x squared minus x equal to 0. So let's factorize this expression. x is common, so I'm going to be bringing out x. Then I'll be having x squared minus x minus 1 equal to zero so from here we see that x is equal to zero or this expression in this bracket which is x squared minus x minus one is equal to zero so we've got a value for x already so let's look for other values of x in this other equation let's do that all right for this second one we can apply the general formula which is x equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Now, notice that I have a here to be 1, b to be negative 1, and c to be negative 1. So let's substitute that. So x is equal to negative b is negative 1 plus or minus square root of b squared, which is negative 1 squared, minus 4 times a is 1 times c is negative 1 
now divide by 2a, which is 2 times 1. So x here is going to be 1 plus or minus. Here, I'm going to be having the square root of 5 when I express or solve this expression inside the radical. So all over 2 times 1 is 2. So the value of x here is, let me bring it out, is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2 or 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. So you can say that we've been able to get three values for x and y in this first case. Remember that x is equal to y in this first case. So the values for x and y which we've been able to get is, the first one is x is 0, that means y is also 0. Then the second one is x is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Since x is equal to y, y is going to be having the same value over 2. That is it. So the third one is this one. x is 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. And since x and y are equal, I'm going to be having y to be 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. So we've been able to solve the first case and having three values for x and y. So now let's go back so that we can be able to solve the second case. Let's go. All right, so this is actually our second case. So let's do that real quick. All right, for our case two, I'm going to be moving everything here to the right-hand side so that I have y squared plus xy plus x squared. Now, watch carefully. I'm going to be moving this one to this side so I have negative x, negative y, then this is plus 1 equal to zero. Well, in order to make this factorizable, I'm going to be applying a trick to this expression. And how do I do that? Well, I'm going to be multiplying through by 2. So let's multiply through by 2. So I have uh, 2y squared plus 2xy plus 2x squared minus 2x minus 2y then plus 2 equal to zero. Now watch carefully what I'm about to do. Now remember there are two y squared here. I'm going to be taking one which is y squared. Now let me look for this is minus 2y so let's bring it close minus 2y. Then I'm going to be taking one from these two so I'll say plus one. So that is it. Now plus let's do the same thing to this x squared. So there are two x squared here. So I'm going to be taking one. So say x squared. Very good. So now minus 2x. So minus 2x. Now let's take the remaining one from this two plus one. Cool. So let's go back to this expression. This is y squared. Remember I've taken one already. So remaining one of it. So plus y squared. Now plus 2xy plus 2xy. Now, let's take the remaining one x squared from here, plus x squared equal to zero. Now, everything is factorizable. Now, this expression can be written as y minus one to the power of two. That is it. Now, plus, this expression can be written the same way, but this time with x minus one to the power of two. Now, plus, this last expression can be written as y plus x to the power of 2 equal to 0. Now we have three terms here, but looking at the first, second, and third term, we can see that they are all positive integers since they are all perfect squares. Are you seeing that? Very good. So it means that the addition of these three terms is supposed to give me 0. And we can see that this can only be possible when each of these terms are equal to 0. So that means we are trying to say that y minus 1 squared is the same, which is equal to x minus 1 squared is equal to y plus x squared, and they are all equal to 0. Now, solving them individually, I'm going to be having y to be equal to 1 from this first expression. From this second expression, I'm going to be having x to be equal to 1, but for this last expression, I'll be having y to be equal to negative x. Now, notice that what I have in this last expression is contradictory to this other two. So, since y cannot be negative x, 
that means this is contradiction. Contradiction. So since I have contradiction here, I do not have any solution from here. Very good. So our only solution is what we've already got before to be x comma y to be equal to 0 comma 0. Now when x is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, y is also the same, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. And when x is 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2, y is also the same, 1 minus the square root of 5 over 2. So these are the only three possible solutions for x and y. Well, if you have a better way of solving this question, a better and quicker way, I mean, go ahead and share with us in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.